Howard Stern Show. How concerned are you about box office and all that bullshit? I mean, it, it's, I'm, I'm here at early in the morning. So. It, it, that, Is that's this true. a live release? <laughs> <laughs> We're I don't not rolling. Show up. <laughs> yeah, right. We're not here last month. You We're said, not rolling this out slowly. This is a wide release. They really said and you're wide. upset about yeah. that. No, I mean, it, it, they, they took it down a little bit. Sometimes they get a little greedy, and it's like, it's 3,000. It's like, dude, calm down. It's good. Let's, so, let's so, have an impact theaters. Let's, tell me about how you put a movie together, okay? Because you, you tell me about the finances, okay? You purposely made a small film. I made a small film. I wrote a script. I gave it to this guy, Scott Rudin, great producer. Mm -hmm. The Firm, uh, Social Network. Right. Uh, you know, all the Paul Thomas Anderson movies, all the Coen Brothers movies. Like, Scott Rudin's the best producer in the world. In right? other words, you wrote this... The Rick Rubin of film, okay. Scott Rudin. So you wrote this on your own, sitting at home. Nobody paid you to write this at first. You just did it at I just City. did it. I just, like, had an idea. I was... Honestly, I was at filming Grown Ups 2. With Adam Sandler. With Sandler. And I was having a good time, but I wasn't, like, feeling, like, involved. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I was like... You go, you, you say the like, line. Coax. I was having a good time. I'm hanging with my boys. It's great. Right. But this was in Boston? You were hanging yeah, out with them? Yeah, I was in them? Boston. Right. And it was... I mean, you know, I want to do another one just because we have such a good time. Right. But I wasn't really involved. I wasn't doing much. I would have long stretches off. You know, like, big budget movie. And I was just like, okay, I, I got to do something with my time here. Right. Let me write a movie. And, and you had this idea for the movie. I had this idea kind of swirling in my head. And so do you, you, you start to write the movie on your own, and no one's paying you to no write the movie. No one's paying me a dime. I don't know if it's ever going to see the light of day. L you say, let me see if I can do this. Let me just sit down and write. And is it hard to write a movie in the sense that there's a format you have to follow? You know, exterior, there interior, is, this You know, that. I didn't even... This is a weird movie. It's it's the better best movie I've ever done because I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> I totally didn't give a fuck. What does that mean? Didn't give a fuck? What other I people just thought? Didn't think about what other people thought. I wrote it by myself. Right. Every other movie I had, you know, me and a bunch of people, like five guys in a room. Writing. Why did you do that? Because you didn't have confidence. Uh, the other movies, yeah, because I didn't right. have confidence, and yeah, I just didn't have the confidence to sit down and do it myself. Right. And actually, Louis told me, if you're going to write another movie, you should do it yourself. You should be in a room. You should be sweating. You should you should feel horrible. You should be scared. Because that's how Louis does it. Yeah, Louis just, sits by himself and should, writes his show. You should have an empty page screaming at you like, fill me up, motherfucker. So Louis gave you advice. Louis gave me advice. Louis hey, gives me lots of advice. Did you go to your buddy Seinfeld for advice? No, not on this one. Not early. No. Okay. But uh, Louis, you know, Louis... Louis knows what you he's watch, doing. You watch his show, you're like... Yeah, he's great. And it's weird. You ever see the... You watch his show? I watch it. I, I'm not um, uh, there every week, there's but a ver I, There's an episode where Mel Melissa Leo and Louis go on a date. Right. And she wants him to eat her pussy in the car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, I'm throwing the feedback. <laughs> and he, he won't eat her pussy. And she, she's like, eh, Obama. It's <laughs> 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 the funniest shit in the world. So he so says, I watched that episode and was like, what the fuck am I doing? Right. What am I doing? That intimidated you. That, it didn't even intimidate. It made me sad. It was like, oh, shit. You mean you can be that funny? Right. You can be that raw? Right. What the fuck am I doing? So did that inspire you or intimidate you? That inspired you? me. That oh, inspired it inspired you. You said, like, I better let it all hang I'm out. I'm going to let it all hang out. If he's got Melissa Leo wanting her pussy eating. How long does it take you to write? <laughs> blaming Obama. <laughs> Chris, how long does it take you to write this script? So I wrote it in about a mm, little under three months. Three months. And, yeah. and and how do you know when it's done? You Do you labor over this thing? You labor over it. You have a read-through. Right. You get a bunch of actors together, you have a read-through, and they read it aloud, and you hear what sucks and what's good, and then you go back and rewrite some more. And you kept it to yourself. You did all of the writing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So then you contact this character, Scott Rudin. Yeah. And he says His to you... character. Now, now, he gets back and says, hey, this is good. This is good. All right. And he calls up uh, Barry Diller. Okay, Barry Diller owns what now? Because he's he's a big he owns mogul. A lot of stuff. Man. Right, he's very successful. He's, he's way over. My Why not go to Paramount? Why not go to a uh, Brad Gray or or one of um, these guys? Because they're gonna note it to death. I see. They're gonna take all the ingredients out that make it great. Okay. They're gonna make it as simple as possible. They're they're scared of not, you know not 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 you know Brad not Gray, Brad, I mean, but, right? Yeah. But the studios, a lot of times, they just skit like, oh, white people are going to get this, or white people are going to get that. And it's like, yeah, 
Right. They'll get it all. They should. I They'll mean, get it all. <laughs> white people aren't that stupid. Yeah, so <laughs> right. a lot of times they take, they're so scared of what white people are going to get. Well, they take uh, all the ingredients out. Well, there are All the soul food is out of the... <laughs> all. Now it's just bland. You it's said bland yourself chicken. that a lot of <laughs> movies that have black characters are civil rights movies, and that's, that's a it. Lot. Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I haven't done one of those. No. I don't, I'm not really interested. I'm not interested in anything that happened before the Jackson 5. <laughs> You know what? I, I always say that. You don't that want to be in a slave if movie? I see, if I see Oprah in the movie, I can't go. Oh, no, I'm not going to say that. But I don't I don't need any scene like, Mama, I don't know what we going to do. That's <laughs> not you. I, I, that's not me. You it's know, not, it's I'm not, a contemporary guy. You are. So so it's kind of refreshing for the a wide man. audience to see you with, like, a girl and to see you in a modern-day situation. And you're not, situation, you're not trying to not, get your civil rights or and or like cursing like I curse and I sound like I sound and you know. The Howard Stern Show.